Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, my title at JVC is General Manager of Engineering, so I'm involved in product development, and my background, I am design engineer. So that's why I like hardware, and we'll talk about a lot of different pieces of hardware today. Of course, we like software, we like computers, we like cloud, we do a lot of things in the cloud today, but for me, I'm still attached in some way to hardware, so I will we'll talk about what do you need to bring live video from location. And this is not related to distribution. It's not about how you post your video and how you distribute it using Wowza platform or some other platforms. It's really about that real rudimentary thing. How do you go live? Let's say you need to do this presentation live right now. What kind of equipment you use? What kind of connection you need? And what kind of technique you need to do to make sure that your stream is robust it doesn't interrupt, it doesn't stop in progress, like, you know, loading or something else. What, what is that you need to deliver broadcast quality video from location to the next step, which is your distribution, your cloud server, et cetera, et cetera. And this process of bringing video live from location to that first uh, endpoint, which will take care of distribution, re-encoding or something else, we call it first mile. And the first mile is very critical in many cases when we're talking about live video. Who needs live video? I mean, it's maybe a silly question, but when we talk about our business development and products, we traditionally sell our products to, of course, broadcasters, and you know, news live, it's very important, and what we learn from our customers is that life is very important for TV networks today, because otherwise they lose business to Netflix. If it's not live, Everything else you can watch somewhere else, so life is very important. Of course, colleges, sports, high school, college, life sports, there are many games which are only relevant when they are live. When the game is over, it's finished. Not many people will watch it, pre-recorded. Of course, events uh, and many other applications. But the first question I, I ask the customer when we're talking about life, where should this video go? This is a very specific question, because will it be posted on Facebook, YouTube, or does it need to go to decoder? Does customer require to have large screen display? If that's the case, then obviously hardware decoder needs to be placed. Because as much as we like computer and in-browser playback, when requirement is to have SDI output, HDMI output, then decoder is obviously the only way to go. Traditional ways of bringing live video from location in the past, there was always used satellite trucks, microwave trucks, cameras connected to the uh, encoder inside the truck, and there's a microwave for satellite transport. Uh, obviously, it's expensive. It's not cheap at all because it goes by the minute. In case of uh, satellite, in case of microwave, you have to have antennas. You have to have directional view from antenna to the next, either to the TV station or to the relay station. So it's really not that easy. Good news for microwave and satellite is that this is peer-to-peer -peer connection. There's nobody else there. It's just you. And you can enjoy this connection. It's good quality. It's uh, different latency, satellite high latency, microwave less, but still, this is a dedicated connection. Uh, when video over IP was introduced, uh, there are many ways to deliver it, and it's actually today we see much more video moved over IP, and we see satellite uh, is actually uh, going down, and what they did, they introduced actually IP satellite service to somehow be competitive in that market, but Video over IP is great. You can send it supposedly from anywhere. You can use bonded uh, LTE devices known as backpacks produced by many companies. You can use Wi-Fi, you can use LAN, you can do many things. The only problem here is that you are not alone on that connection. You're using public network. Whether you're using bonded LTE or Wi-Fi or LAN, typically video is transferred through the internet, which is public network. And what happens in the public networks, because of congestion and because of totally unpredictable conditions, you can lose your packets, because you know, video is packetized and you send its packets. Uh, when you lose, you look at the typical LTE uplink performance, you can see this curve here, it goes up and down, depending on how many users at every particular point of time. You cannot really guarantee anything. If you measure speed with the speed test at the beginning of the session, and assume that it will stay like that for another 30 minutes, this is not true. It will never stay like that. It changes up and down. When your transfer rate goes below your chosen uh, streaming bit rate, then the loss of packets take place. And when packets are lost, depending on where, what is your endpoint device where you're streaming to, 
If you stream it to decoder, then you will see corrupted video on the screen. If you stream it to CDNs, you will see that progress bar because there's no more information. They're waiting until they can collect more data. And you know what happens with viewers? When they see this, they most likely go to somewhere else. So you lose your audience. So it's very important to be able to deliver packets. Uh, different protocols are used for this purpose. And uh, every time when I hear, when I look at the new uh, hardware, new devices introduced for live streaming from location, I'm, al I'm always interested in what type of protocol they're using. Because obviously UDP and RTP protocols what we do in our labs, we have special device which simulates packet loss. It's a network simulator. And we also simulate latency, jitter, and also packet loss. And what we know about UDP and RTP that those protocols cannot even tolerate 0.1% of packet loss. You, you lose only one packet in every 100 packets or less than that, you already see a stop and go on the video stream if you use UDP and RTP. So using UDP and RTP for streaming via public networks doesn't make any sense. It will, video will become corrupted sooner or later. Uh, RTP protocol can be enhanced by the SIMPT error correction. This is SIMPT 2022 FEC, which allows to compensate up to 2-3% of packet loss, which is, which is not a bad thing. It's, it's already better than raw UDP RTP protocols. Another choice uh, is uh, we use a Zixi-based protocol. Zixi is based on UDP, but utilizes a very sophisticated way to compensate for packet loss, which can compensate up to 30%. We'll talk about Zixi in a moment. Traditional RTMP, which we talked uh, during previous session, is idea is good because it's based on TCP. So every packet is supposed to, have to be confirmed and resend. It's true if you have bandwidth available and buffers are set uh, and are available on the encoder. If not, then obviously you lose your packets. And when you lose your packets in RTMP, player shows that progress, it goes to black screen and it shows progress until they can collect more information. So, okay, this is not really suitable for professional environment where you must deliver every single packet. Uh, SRT was introduced. Uh, I just put this here. They say it's great. Uh, we don't have much data. I personally don't know much about SRT. It seems to be similar to Zix in terms of how they do things, how performance is measured, what is that percentage of packet loss they can tolerate, I don't know yet, to be determined. Uh, this, is, this slide actually talks about RTP with SIMT error correction. SIMT error correction adds additional data to your bitrate, uh, which increases your bandwidth, but it's calculated in a way that if you lose some packets during transmission, the algorithm of forward error correction will be able to reconstruct your stream. This is, this is good. We always use RTP with SIMT when we stream via LAN in the closed environment. Let's say in the studio when we have uh, IP video server in one location and decoders in other locations, we always use RTP with the SIMT error correction because RTP uh, with SIMT doesn't have any added latency and is good when your uh, network is more or less stable, but it's absolutely not enough for uh, LTE or for any bonded LTE or Wi-Fi connection from location. The protocol which we've been using for last, I'd say, four years is, uh, comes from Zixi. Uh, Zixi is a company which specializes on contribution and moving channels from one country to another via public network, which is internet. The way Zixi protocol works is quite interesting. When uh, lost packets are detected, depending on the environment and a selected latency, what protocol does? When they detect lost packet, they send request to the camera to repeat that packet. And if time is enough, packet will be repeated and they'll be inserted right to make sure that your stream is robust. Another way, they also add a controllable amount of forward error correction because remember that forward error correction adds additional data so it increases your bandwidth. If you are streaming video from location and you struggle with a low bandwidth, adding more to your stream is not really a good strategy. But you can add a little bit more or you can do it dynamically. Zixi protocol, what they do, they actually measure continuously network performance. They measure latency, jitter, round trip time, and packet loss. And based on that information, 
they dynamically change amount of forward error correction and amount of repeat request. If time allows, they would do complete repeat request with zero forward error correction, meaning that your bitrate will never be increased because you're already dealing with a low bandwidth on location. And if you have uh, very low latency specified, you can dial, you can choose latency in the, the, in the encoder. If very low latency specified and there's no time for repeat request, or if you repeat uh, round trip time increased on the network, because remember, round trip time, jitter, latency of public network changes dynamically. It's never fixed. So if your round trip time becomes longer and longer for some reason, then less repeat requests will be used and more forward error correction will be added. So it's really dynamic uh, QOC protocol, which um, provides quite amazing results. With the uh, latency around uh, 1.5 Second, Zixi can compensate up to 30% of packet loss. Think about it, one third of your packets were lost and you're still looking at the uh, perfect quality video. Uh, Zixi is adopted by many uh, encoder and decoder manufacturers and is used by some, some examples of major clients are using UFC, Fashion Channel Network, RTL Group, Hockey TV and many others. Uh, so what do you really need for successful streaming video over public network from location. You need really three things. First of all, you need to have high quality encoder because remember what they used to say, garbage in, garbage out. When you, when you are encoding video with a low bit rate and quality is not great, it's not going to improve when you move it over the network and decode it. So it's really low quality encoder. Uh, sometimes contributes to that soft and pixelized looking images. Uh, encoder hopefully should be equipped with the uh, adaptive bitrate because that's another property of um, some protocols like Zixi. Uh, if nothing else helps, then bitrate will be lowered to make sure that you maintain your video stream uninterrupted because the most objective is to never stop your stream. So it never goes in progress or it never shows garbled video. It's always video. You can lose some quality when bitrate is reduced, but you never, you're supposed to never lose your stream. So adaptive bitrate is a good idea. How you check your encoder? Uh, my recommendation, try to encode 3 megabit at 1080i or 5, or 5 megabit at 1080-60p and look at the quality. High quality encoders can do better at the low bit rates. When you encode at 20 megabit, pretty much any encoder is equal in the marketplace. When you start to try to record it, not to record to encode at 3 megabit or less than that, that's where high quality encoders with a sophisticated algorithm really stand out. So you have encoder, high quality encoder, and second thing you need, you need to have resilient streaming protocol. Obviously not UDP, not RTP. We recommend Zixi, uh, RTP with SIMT error correction. Uh, hopefully SRT shows us some, uh, some good results. But you have to have error correction when you're planning to deliver a video from location in a professional way, meaning with no interruptions, no progress bar on the player, robust stream uh, in uh, randomly changing conditions. And you also need to have reliable connection, more or less reliable. It's difficult in the field, but obviously combining multiple connections in one, what we call bonded connection, you can bond LTE, you can bond LTE with Wi-Fi, even LAN connections. We have customers who are streaming live sports games, high schools, even LAN connection uh, is prone to errors and bitrate goes up, not bitrate, but bandwidth goes up and down. So even if somebody said, oh, we have LAN available right now in this hotel, and you can use LAN to stream this event live, I would still use robust error correction and everything else is still very important. In some cases, you need to have multiple destinations. You're streaming from one camera or maybe two cameras to multiple uh, destinations simultaneously, like uh, to your Facebook and YouTube and maybe decoder at the local cable channel at the same time. In that case, you would need to have something like IP video server or some kind of relay service which would take one stream and multiply it in many. So let's talk about um, encoders a little bit. Traditional, you know, everybody's familiar with the backpacks. Backpack typically has SDI input and they have encoder built in and the streaming engine built in and multiple connections. 
what we did at JVC actually many years ago, first time we did it in 2002, we built encoder and streaming all inside the camera. So actually every camera is equipped with encoder and streaming engine and with IP connections. And in that case, all you need, you really need a reliable connection on the, in, the, in the field, and every camera can be connected. It's not SDI or HDMI anymore, it's IP stream, which means you can use bonded uh, wireless uh, Wi-Fi hotspot, which we recently introduced, or you can go as simple as you can use your iPhone. You can use your iPhone with a broadcast camera because this connection is over IP. But of course, iPhone with a single connection will not provide you with a reliable transport. So uh, cameras with the built-in encoders eliminate necessity to use outboard encoder because again, you're in a field, you're limited in people, you're limited in space, in time, and it needs to be robust. Uh, in the field, you would use bonded LTE hotspots or long range wireless connections. And in our case, what is important that we provide a complete error corrected stream utilizing Zixi or SIMT uh, with a 2022 error correction all the way from the camera uh, to the endpoint, to the IP server. Uh, this year we went further and we introduced, we have a product line of cameras starting from $2,000 all the way to $13,000. So it's a big range. We have customers who are broadcasters at, at the highest level and we have uh, schools, high schools who, sport, who stream live games at the lower level, starting from $2,000 all the way to $13,000. Uh, but we keep pushing that envelope with the as much as possible built into the camera. And the newest camera we introduced this year, uh, not only can stream live video, but it can also receive return video over IP. There's decoder built into the camera, so you don't really need to call and say, can you hear me, can you see me? You can actually see return video coming back through the same connection uh, on the camera. This especially it's of course, a uh, popular function in the broadcast, because very often when you do stand up interview by directional, uh, you can see actually people in the studio whom you're talking to those anchors. This is a very convenient feature. But you can see that uh, everything is getting into the camera and all you need for that, uh, it's almost like it's almost a computer with a lens. It's a lot of things. And all you need for that device to function is IP, reliable IP connection in the field. To address, uh, and like I said, you can use Wi-Fi, you can use many other ways, but to address that particular need, we introduced actually a variety of bonded LTE hotspots. And this is not like encoder, like backpack where there's encoder. This doesn't have any SDI inputs or outputs. It doesn't have any encoder. This is pure IP device. But the beauty of this is that you can connect multiple cameras to this because as a hotspot, it supports unlimited amount of connections. The only limitation is available bandwidth. So if you're streaming from one camera at five megabit, you can easily use typically two cameras at minimum with the typical upload bit rates we're seeing 12, 15 megabit using bonded connection. Built-in LTE modems actually support LTEA, and LTEA is something which is called carrier aggregation. And what happens is that each carrier actually now is using two frequencies, and they double upload and download speed, distributing bitrate through all these uh, available two frequencies. It's not available in all areas, but Verizon, T-Mobile, and Sprint, they support carrier aggregation, which means that your speeds become an Ideally doubled, but if not doubled, at least 1.5 times more. To make this complete, we developed the, the whole workflow, and you can see it in our booth here. It's not only product range of cameras, including PTZ cameras, small cameras, large cameras. Each camera has everything built in, encoder, streaming engine, Wi-Fi, and LAN connectivity. And then to utilize this equipment in the field, we added bonded LTE hotspots, which again, will work with any camera. It will work with computer, with anything else. This is all universal. And then on the receiving side, we have uh, video IP servers, which can receive one stream or multiple streams and distribute to multiple destinations. And also hardware decoders, if somebody needs to stream to uh, large screen displays or somebody needs to have HDMI and SDI output. We have interesting uh, brochure which specify, which actually talks about all the solutions available here or in our booth. Um, and this is it for me. If you have any questions, please. 
All right, if we have one quick question, let's be quick. Anybody have one quick question for Edgar? Anyone? I don't see any hands. Okay, one quick one. Uh, can I have two? No. <laughs> yeah. Are we support, going to support HDR? Oh, yeah. Um, camera yeah. supports HDR. Oh, for, okay. for, for stream, it doesn't matter. Okay. Whatever, yeah, HDR is re sensor and processor. Yes, HDR, absolutely. And servers are also independent from a codec. It could be H.264, H.265, it doesn't matter. Round of applause for Edgar.